As always, it's a pleasure to be with you tonight and to have a chance to uh, talk with you about some uh, vegetation management work that Duke Energy is performing in your area. Um, sent a map and some rough descriptions of the territory to you last week so you'd have a chance to take a look at that. Basically what we're doing in this particular section is routine maintenance work on one of our circuits out of what we call our Glen Raven substation. Uh, this is routine vegetation management work that we do on all of our circuits year in, year out. In this region alone, we'll, we'll do something like 400 miles of uh, line maintenance work this year, uh, and we'll duplicate that across the other six regions that we have. We have 50,000 miles of overhead line uh, that we maintain, and we do that on a periodic schedule year to year. We don't arbitrarily choose lines just because it's been X number of years since the last time that we've been through. We look at uh, reliability statistics for that line, how many outages it's had, what type of outages, those sorts of criteria. And we prioritize them year after year on, those, on that basis. What you've got here is just a brief look at the Glen Raven circuit and the part of that uh, area of town that it serves. As you can see, it's kind of bounded from uh, the north side by Edgewood, goes down to Mevin Street on the south side, Huffman Mill on the west side, and Rockwood or Neal on the east side. Uh, our crews will be coming through that area over the next couple of weeks, uh, pruning that uh, overhead right away. We will notify each of the customers along that line, and you've got an example of the door hanger, I think, in front of you. We'll put one of those door hangers on everybody's uh, door, uh, and we'll check on there what type of work we're going to be doing on their particular piece of property. They will have a uh, contact number if they have any questions about a particular tree or something that may be going on in the yard so somebody can come out and meet with them one-on-one -on -one and discuss any problems or questions they may have. If we're going to take a tree down, we'll mark it with some tape that's bright green such as this. We'll note that on that card so that that customer will have a chance to talk to us about it and we can explain to them the reasons why. We've also got in there a brochure that shows you a little bit about the type of maintenance work that we do, the kind of clearances that we try to get, and the types of trees that we'd recommend that you plant underneath those lines <coughs> going forward. Nobody uh, particularly today likes this type of maintenance work, but it's a necessary part of keeping the lights on and giving you the reliability and the quality power that you need. Uh, I have talked with several of you about some uh, interruptions that you've seen in your own neighborhood. And more than likely, probably by far and away, trees and shrubs are the greatest uh, cause for outages and blinks on our lines. Uh, someone asked a question about the map. Uh, it's got some designations on there. Uh, F stands for a fuse. S stands for a switch. That's just electrical equipment along that line that segments it. So when a tree were to hit that line, it would blow the fuse and it would segment just one street as opposed to the whole line going down. So that's, that's basically what that is. That's electrical equipment. Uh, as I said, three days prior to work and everybody would get a, a hang tag. Uh, and so if they have any questions, they can give us a call. With that, basically we want to open it up to your questions. Any questions uh, from Mr. Montgomery? Depending on the... Uh, the crews will typically get somewhere between a mile to a mile and a half of line a day. Uh, this particular circuit, as you can see, is, it's lengthy at the beginning as it comes out of the substation, but it doesn't serve very many neighborhoods for that first couple of miles. It's only when it gets down to Highway 70 that it begins to get a little cumbersome. I'm going to anticipate for this line, it's going to take in the neighborhood of about three to four weeks, possibly a little longer depending on weather. If you look at our statistics, we can clear anywhere from 80 miles a month to in some cases this past year, we only cleared about seven miles a month, depending on the weather, storms, how our crews are able to work day to day, or if they're called off for storm restoration work. So a lot of things can affect that. But I, approximately about a month, I guess, is what I'd say for this one. Any other questions? Yeah, on your cut lanes, there may be some trees on the edge of it. I yes. know there's some pine trees in this particular area here that have really grown over the last 20 years. That may have a tendency, you know, ice forms on these things. So you're going to, what's your path, the width of your path? Yes, sir. Uh, probably the best example I can give you is, I believe it was last year, uh, we had an outage on Highway 70. It was caused by a 60-foot pine tree right near the Mays Lake area. Uh, took out that entire sector of town. Uh, it was well outside our right-of-way. Our right-of-ways are not, we're typically about 40 feet wide, so we're 20 feet on either side of the center line of the pole. This was a 60-foot pine tree that was well outside the, uh, the right-of-way and fell into the line. 
we will look at those trees as we go through and we will mark them with this tape and then the forester will make a, a decision on whether or not it's, it's a danger tree. We call those a danger tree. If it's leaning the opposite way, obviously we won't, we won't take it out. Right. Uh, another question I probably need to answer for you. What will we do with the brush and the, uh, the leftover material from the trees? Most of this line is routine maintenance work, so the brush will be chipped and hauled away. Uh, there are a couple of sections where we've uh, already identified some trees that we're going to have to take out. In that case, we've done this both ways. We used to take the trees, and folks got upset because they used it for firewood, so now we leave the trees, and folks aren't necessarily happy about that either. Uh, but at the end of the day, we realize it is your tree, and so we'll cut it up in manageable lengths, usually about what we've termed as fireplace length, and leave it for the, uh, for the property owner. Any other questions? Thank you, sir. Appreciate you being here tonight.